I'm Sonalie Leslie Miller with AmuseWine.com. Tonight I am talking about one whole section of grapes that actually live right here in my own backyard in the state of Minnesota. One of the most frequently asked questions I get is, what do you think about Minnesota wines? Well, I'm actually here to talk about one particular winery, all here with a whole portfolio of wines to kind of choose from. Now, when you think about Minnesota grapes, you have to remember that we cannot compare them to the same grapes that you might drink on a regular basis. There might be some similar weights and profiles, but when it comes to the flavors, the flavors are sort of all their own. Many of the grapes that are here in the state of Minnesota were constructed by the University of Minnesota. In the in 1980s, they actually really started to make some grapes that were quite resistant to the weather. So we're gonna actually review a few of these grapes tonight. Um, this is the Crow River Winery. Now, the Crow River Winery is located about an hour west of the Twin Cities, and this is right in the middle of the Crow River watershed. The Crow River watershed is defined by a 15,000-year-old glacier that actually hit the region in particular. The Des Moines Glacier actually came through and dropped a lot of sediment through this particular valley. And what we're finding is, is that you have some nice deep clay along with kind of a nice level of gravel on top, which makes the region quite drainable for uh, grapes to grow. So we have um, some kind of stony clay soils that will give off a little bit of this minerality in a few of these wines. But um, let's review some of these wines. The winery, of course, is owned by Mike and Val McBrady, who I think actually do a really great job with uh, the portfolio of wines that they've concocted. Kind of to start here, um, they do make a couple of uh, nice little fruit wines, I think, that are great for kind of entertaining. Whether you're doing this from a dessert profile or an aperitif, I think that these are actually great ways to start. This is a strawberry rhubarb wine. The strawberry rhubarb wine is actually quite sweet. I can see it actually going along with a nice little dessert cobbler, um, something maybe even crumbled with blue cheese at the end of your evening. Uh, great, very sweet again, like I said, but I think that it would actually go nicely with uh, some sort of nice little baked fruit cobbler. Um, the second wine here that we're enjoying is the Honey Crisp and Cranberry wine. Uh, the Honey Crisp and Cranberry wine is just that. You can smell loads of Honey Crisp apple, Honey Crisp apples, of course, right here out of the state of Minnesota. It's really, really quite tart. Um, the cranberry sense to it and the flavors actually almost remind me of like a cranberry relish that you'd use for a Thanksgiving or holiday dinner. This might actually do pretty well with a little goat cheese over a spinach salad, um, maybe some nice sliced uh, apricot, pears, peaches, or strawberries, um, maybe even some crisp apples to go over top of your salad. Fruit ones. So instead of crafting them with grapes, of course they're making them with fruit, and I think that those are kind of some nice fun ways to kind of start off. You'll see a lot of the Midwestern states making quite a few wines out of fruit. Um, I think it's a wonderful way to harvest and uh, produce something that's kind of fun to drink. The first white that we'll have here is the Frontenac Grief. Frontenac Grief actually produces loads of kind of peachy apricot sort of baked honey scents, and this wine has a pretty severe amount of acidity to it, I think. Very, very, very crisp, almost lemony in a way. Um, this, I think, again, great with some goat cheese topped over a salad. You might even enjoy this with some nice scallops, um, some shrimp, uh, even a nice big heavy round full plate of pasta, like a creamy pasta, because this could actually cut right through. Let's talk about some of the red grapes that we're growing here in Minnesota. The first is Frontenac. Frontenac is actually a very disease resistant, heavy producing red grape here in the region. And it's planted in the Midwest, New England, and also parts of Canada. Um, I would call it sort of the lighter scale, a little bit lighter when it comes to some of the red wines that we're producing here in the Midwest. Um, I think if you like something that has some nice light weight to it, this is actually a great wine to start with loads of cherry, and uh, a little hint of raspberry and spice. I can see this going with actually a nice piece of salmon. You could also do maybe a grilled chicken breast, throw some cranberries um, into kind of a nice little salad topped off with some grilled chicken, I think a really nice pairing. 
Next is the grape Marquette. Now, Marquette is a cousin of Frontenac, also the grandson of Pinot Noir. It's usually uh, tends to be very high in sugar, and the acidity on the Marquette grape is actually quite moderate. Loads of blackberry, pepper, and plum, I would say, of this particular wine. Obviously, you can see I've tried them all a couple times here as I walk through the portfolio. I think that this actually would be pretty nice with something a little bit heavier. So if you grilled a nice chunk of meat, you could actually do um, some steak frites. That would be kind of fun, I think, to do with this wine. And uh, heck, it does carry kind of that nice little spice weight to it again. Maybe even some carpaccio. That would be kind of fun to try with this. Now, the winery at the same time also produces a California Merlot. You'll find that many people in the Midwest are actually buying juice from the West Coast or the grapes and making it themselves. The California Merlot that the winery produces is Wall well Merlot. It's kind of plummy, jammy, and low with loads and loads and loads of kind of mountain berry fruit. Juicy, oozy, and really quite nice. Um, this, I would say that uh, maybe some grilled pork would be wonderful. Uh, maybe even something smoked, because there's a little bit of a hinty palette to this also. Um, I think really quite profitable for something that is just really nice right out of the gate. The winery does produce actually quite a few different dessert wines. The two that I have in front of me here is a Marquette sweet wine. Now, Marquette, obviously, one of the grapes that we've already tried. So it kind of has that nice pepper, blackberry, plummy fruit to it, but this is produced in a port style. Blue cheese, maybe some chocolate would actually be a really nice little kind of accoutrement to this wine in particular. It has loads and loads of that kind of heavy berry fruit to it, and all the way through would probably uh, even pair up something quite nice to a uh, Minnesota s'more in the summertime. Quite fun. Uh, and then the last that we're actually showing here is something that you can actually sit down and drink, but this is rather something that you'd throw into a salad. This is their um, smoked garlic wine, and they do have a couple of different varieties of this. Now, the winery itself is sustainable, so they do actually have um, some hard neck garlic that they grow on their property, along with um, they keep a few bees on the property as well. Um, the garlic, obviously, right off of their property, they're making a great wine with it. Uh, they can throw this into a nice salad, I would say, or some sort of a dressing, some sort of a sauce that you're actually producing um, when you're throwing your dinner together at night. Kind of a nice little selection here, eight different styles to try. All the way through, I invite you to definitely get out into Minnesota wine country and kind of try them all out for yourself. Don't take someone else's word for it. Get on out there and adventure the property yourself. It's a lot of fun. Thanks for joining Amuse tonight. Catch more with us, more wine recommendations, tips, recipes, reviews, and more at amusewine.com. Thanks for joining us.